So this particular test is from the hard prompt. So it's a very popular hard problem that a lot of users test these models on. So I'm going to also test it here. You can see it's very slow in generation, but you can see all of these actually end with Apple, all the sentences. So that looks pretty good, actually. And I'm impressed that Grog2 was able to do that. So that's an improvement. So we have a huge update from the chatbot arena. XCI's Grog2 and Grog Mini are now officially on the leaderboard. They have over 6,000 community votes. Grog2 has claimed the number two spot, surpassing GPT-40, which is the May checkpoint and tying with the latest Gemini model. Grog2 Mini also impresses at number five. And here are some more detailed results on how they perform on the different categories like hard prompts, coding, instruction following. In this video, we are gonna discuss a bit more on these results and test the latest Grog2 model, which is the more intelligent model of the two models that were released. Something to keep in mind with these results, always run your own experiments and assess things for yourself on your specific use cases. These results, I think, give us more or less an idea on how powerful these models are. The fact that Grog2, this latest checkpoint, can outperform GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, that to me is remarkable. And at the same time, I have so many questions. So let's look at some of the comments here down below. It says the fact that XAI caught up so quickly is truly remarkable. I think it's impressive. Regardless of what you think about Grog and the way they have executed on the release of this Grok model on the X platform, I think you still have to give a lot of credit to that team to be able to pull off such an advanced and powerful and strong model in that short amount of time. Keep in mind that some of these other players like Google and OpenAI took a relatively longer time to produce these more advanced models this user says, I'm confused by this because ChatGPT is number one, but anyone who uses these models on a daily basis can tell you confidently that ChatGPT is the weakest model at the moment. I think this is subjective. For some use cases, I do get ChatGPT to be really good. For some other use cases, Gemini performs good for coding tasks in particular, for math related things and just in general day-to-day -day tasks like marketing, technical content, writing, and so on. I would prefer to use Cloud3 Professor just because of the quality of its output. It's more creative in my opinion. So it really depends. This user says, I'm not sure I agree with Grog2 beating Sonnet 3.5, but I guess that is the power of a relatively uncensored model. I may have to give 4.0 another go. There's a lot of debate about whether these companies should release uncensored models or keep them censored. There's a lot of claims that the censored models don't perform as well as an uncensored model, but you also get the drawback of having a model that can pretty much spit out anything. This user says the most important thing about Grok2, it doesn't lie. I'm not sure about that. It does hallucinate in some of the tasks that I've tested. And yes, the idea is to make it more truthful and so on, but I think it's far away from that. It still has a lot of issues and that will only get better, I think, because if that's the focus, they'll probably create a model that can do better at more trustworthy generation of content. And that matters a lot because if you use the X platform and you get your content, your news and so on on this platform, it's important that this model gets information right, that the information is factual, that there's no misinformation. Anyways, now I'm gonna jump into Grok and I'm gonna do a couple of tests. So here, if you go to this option here, we have Grok2 Mini, and I already did some tests with Grok2 Mini, but now I have access to Grok2 Beta. I'm gonna leave this on check because I wanna just test the, the raw model. So I'm just gonna select that one, and then I'm gonna test the first one here. So the one thing that I'm noticing is that it is super slow, and I think they are already working on this. I saw a tweet from one of their team members. I think in terms of the quality of the function here that it generates, I think it's okay. I like the fact that it has comments. It could have had also more information about the function itself at the top, like the arguments and so on. But overall, it looks good, and it has even an example usage. It even has a longer explanation as well at the bottom. 
The next test I want to try here are these prompts here at the bottom. So these are templates. And I remember these ones were designed to basically prompt the model to give me the latest on a specific event or it could be any news headline. So let's see. So it says Apple is scheduled to unveil its latest products on September 10, 2024. So I don't really follow the Apple events. So I'm not too really sure about that. But you can see that this user says Apple targets September 10. So it's following this particular user. And that's the thing, right? When it follows information about specific users is it qualifying this information is it truthful and so on so these are the things that i think grok2 will find very challenging but overall i think this output is very similar to what i'm getting with grok2 mini so this is nothing too special i was just looking at what it's sourcing where it's getting information from i think macrumus is a popular source for all mac related information this next test is to test whether the model can pull relevant information for me because it has that capability so i actually tested broke too many on this same specific task and it did relatively okay i'm just looking to see if there is any performance enhancement with Grok 2 and whether the quality of the output is better all right so we have information about the rag papers we have speculative retrieval augmented generation graph rag uh, w rag blended rag all of these rag papers and it has like a nice summary of each of these papers. The summary looks a lot cleaner for some reason. I remember with the previous Grok2 mini model, we had like long summarizations for some of them, but for others we had short and it looks like it's super consistent with the summarization of these papers. I noticed that this is the format that it's going with, right? So this model also have the same format. So it starts the answer this way, then it goes into like a list mode, and then it gives you a summary of everything that it has summarized here in this list. And so here are the sources for the new papers. So I know most of these accounts, Langchain, and some users here. So I think it did a good job. I mean, it definitely is pointing to papers. So I think it understood the task and I really like the quality of the output here. Now let's test it for common day-to-day -day things. So for instance, if I am traveling and I would love to visit Belize and I would like to ask it places to eat in Belize, let's see how it answers this particular question. Again, it says based on the general knowledge and trends up to August 2024. So it has the capability to produce and summarize real-time information from the X platform. So in terms of getting good recommendation of places to eat, I'm expecting places that were recently mentioned. So yeah, I know most of these ones. Okay, it gave me 10. Again, look at the format. The format is very consistent. So these ones have short summaries. And then again, it finishes with a with a summary of everything. So this one doesn't look like it's from Belize. I'm not sure about the posts here at the bottom. None of these look like they are references to any Belizean accounts or any of the accounts or restaurants and so on. So I, I would say this is not so good and probably needs to improve. One feature that I really like when I added this prefix, I noticed that I got some nice summaries of any topic that I'm interested in searching more about. So for instance, AI Doomsday, I want to see what are the new posts. Why I really like to use this particular prefix is that when it summarizes the tweets, it uses these usernames. Now, in the latest video that I have done on Grok2Mini, one of the suggestions was to actually include the user account so that I can preview the user. That's something that I think is really important. But it has some details here about that conversation related to EA Doomsday and it summarizes basically gives you an idea on what it is and it explains to you the user posts. So here it says like post implies this and then this user reflects this and then this user touches on that. You can see it's summarizing what that user explained and I'm expecting all of these to appear at the bottom as additional links. So this one is Son of Science. So we can see here towards the end. Okay, now I'm testing for this math problem and None of the models get this right. I always like to test this because I want to see how the model approaches it. Doesn't necessarily have to get it right, but what I'm looking at is the approach and the process. Okay, it says to find the last four digits of the sum of the first 70 prime numbers, we'll need to identify the first 70 prime numbers, sum these primes, and look at only the last four digits of the sum. So here's the approach. And then it says listing and summing all 70 primes manually would be quite cumbersome. So it says the first 70 prime numbers, but it didn't do the addition. It just gave me the summation here. And then it extracted the last four digits, which if this was the correct 
total, then this would be the correct answer. But that's the that's an incorrect answer. That's not the right answer. So it gets this one wrong. But I really like the approach. The only thing I would say is that with the Grok2 mini model, I actually got like some code generated. So it was trying to simulate the code that you could potentially use to solve this particular problem. And I'm not seeing this with this Grok2 beta model. But overall, I think the steps are reasonable. It's just the execution of it doesn't look okay. So this particular test is from the hard prompt. So it's a very popular hard problem that a lot of users test these models on. So I'm going to also test it here. You can see it's very slow in generation, but you can see all of these actually end with Apple, all the sentences. So that looks pretty good, actually. And I'm impressed that Grok2 was able to do that. So that's an improvement. They claim that this model is really good at code generation. No, I actually want to test it on code generation, but I'm interested to get creative code generation. That's the thing that I want. The Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model is really good at creating very unique code. And so let's see what Grog gives us for this. I won't run the code. I can't tell whether it's doing anything interesting just by looking at the code itself. So I'm asking it to generate a creative Python game that helps me with learning about LLMs. I need to improve my technical expertise and memorize key concepts. Okay, so it has some knowledge. Then it has, welcome to LLM Quest. All right, so look at the language that it's using, right? That's really strange. But anyways, it's like a game. It assumes that I would prefer to see some like game simulation for playing the game to learn something about language models, right? So then it has a quiz, then it has this game loop, so it's gonna loop. Then it's just going to ask me questions, I guess. Yes. So it says how to play it. Run the script, execute this Python script on your environment, encounter concepts, choose to encounter to meet a concept. You'll be prompted to define a term related to LLMs. If you get it right, you learn the concept. Quiz, opt for a quiz to test your memory on the concepts you have learned. Learn and memorize. The game uses repetition and active recall, which are effective for learning. Each correct answer reinforces your knowledge, while incorrect answers provide correct information, aiding memorization. You can choose to leave the adventure at any time. Okay, that looks good. It's a very short code. I don't think it has anything complex, but I appreciate the fact that it's using some simulated game here or concepts from a game to help me with the learning, which is what I was expecting it to do, right? Because I asked for a creative Python game. But I think this is still behind Gemini and Cloud Tree Professor Sonnet. Gemini and Cloud Tree Professor Sonnet are really good models at tasks like this. So this is the test that I always use with these models and none of the models have been able to solve this. And I always test it just to be curious what these models are outputting, if there is anything different from the output, because most of the model gives me the same answer and the same type of output, which is always the wrong answer. Yeah, so this one, Candle 4 is the shortest. Yeah, it, it doesn't understand the question, it fails. The correct answer would be this. Lastly, I just want to query it with this particular task, which again, none of the models get this right, so that's wrong. So again, you can see that even this model gets this wrong. Overall, I think it does feel a little bit better in terms of output quality compared to Grok2 Mini. It's a lot slower than Grok2 Mini and that's expected, but I expect that the team actually improves the latency and so forth. I think in comparison with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, it matches in terms of the type of output that I'm getting, but I would prefer still to use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or the Gemini models for anything that's related to code generation. I think Grok2 has a lot of potential for creative type of tasks just because it can pull from the X platform this live information, which is useful for day-to-day -day tasks. So I would definitely use it for day-to-day -day things like ask for recommendations, look for papers, look for suggestions on things to read on a specific topic. Those are the kind of use cases where Grok2 will excel. And again, the output quality is pretty good. And the formatting that it uses is kind of very consistent, right? It always has like this section, then it has a list, then it has the summary at, at the bottom. So I think that's the template that they're using and it's very consistent with the two models. In terms of math capabilities, recent capabilities, I think it's very similar to the other models. It fails at some of these hard tasks. It tries to address the problems in a very similar way. I'll be doing some more tests on more complicated math problems and coding problems in a next video but I will leave it at that for this one. Let me know in the comments if you have tested the model and what your impressions are about it and what you think about this model compared to the other models. What are the weaknesses? What are the drawbacks? It'd be interesting to hear from everyone. What's your take and your experience with this particular Grok2 model? That's it for this video. 
consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you all on the next one.